16 hours difference between New York and Melbourne, and I'd just gone back to my office and I had a phone call from my wife, and she said she wanted me to come home straight away. And I sensed the urgency in her voice. I said, yeah, all right. She said, yeah. I said, the children are all right. You know, the kids. She says, yeah. So I'm driving home and thinking, I wonder what's the problem, you know? We had some sort of carpenters doing some work. I wonder if there's been some disaster, some sort of domestic problem. And I thought, oh my God, you know, my parents. I didn't even ask after them. I wasn't sensitive. Not to even ask after my parents. And I've got a grandmother, 85 years old, same sort of thing. So I got home, I walk in the door, and a friend of mine was standing there, a close friend, does the same sort of thing as me. He's a farista and an academic. He sees me and says, he's got a pro, huh? He's got a problem. I thought he was talking about a case we were working on together. He says, Z, come, come and sit down. He goes to me, there's been a riot in New York, been a riot in Crown Heights. Yanko's been stabbed and he's dead. And my brother, he was the last in the world. I hadn't even given him a thought. I mean, the fact that my brother could be attacked or die, it just hadn't even entered my mind. At first, I feel the cool, calm and collected. I then started asking questions like, who told you, how do you know, are you sure? But I just asked the question, you know, are you sure?